very good evening and welcome to Breeding to Win. You probably wonder what I'm doing here, and so am I, by the way. Got a phone call. Grant Knowles is away on another one of his free weekends playing golf. Still getting paid, though, I believe. He's going to be having a ball. And Julie Alexander has taken all his savings, and she's gone away on a romantic weekend. We wish her all the best. It might be the first winner that she's had for quite a while. Well, those who were there on Tuesday night saw, certainly saw something very special indeed. The Cape Yearling Sale Book 2, now known as the CTS March Yearling Sale, Lot 60 was on show. A bay filly called Siren's Call passed through the ring for 60,000 Rand, qualifying her for the CDS Book 2 Graduates Race in 2015. Two years later, over 1,400 under the lights at Turfentine, the near black filly added a cool 1.25 million to her earnings as Pierre Stratum steered her to victory in the 2.5 million CTS stakes race. Yet her story actually began much earlier than that. Siren's Call made her debut on the 28th of August. Over 1,200 metres casually sauntered to a 5.5 length victory in capable hands of Pierre Stratum. Siren's Call now starts to run at them towards the inside and running on nicely. It's Rose of Castile. Siren's Call is coming on beautifully now. And Siren's Call and Pierre Stratum hit the front. And that's it. Race over. Siren's Call will run away to a convincing win here. Looked extremely well. Won it by five. From the stable, she doesn't show a lot of speed and she takes time to get going. Um, so we were battling at the back there. But... Uh, Actually, quite early on, I could feel there's something there, and uh, uh, obviously we hit the front a bit early, but you know, there was still more to come. So, um, you know, it's this point is just sitting on a first timer. Sometimes it drops a bit on you. So, nice surprise, and she moves very well, and I hope from here she'll go on. 1600 meters and ready, fired away from that mile marker. Trained by Sean Terry, she next lined up in a strong novice company on the 11th of October, and again, Julie obliged. Dream Galaxies just behind them, then Ruby Ruby mesmerizing Melody. Siren's Call is no more than five lengths off the leader. Mirror the Moon is further back with Lady of the Lords and Soft Sand as the trailer. There's seven lengths first to last as they race past the 1200 meter mark. And Banbury's got to the front and leads by three quarters of a length. From Dream Galaxy in second, Atab is racing third. Smart Call is back in fourth position, then Celine and Ruby Ruby. Sirens Call races behind them, five lengths off the leader. Then Mesmerizing Melody, Mirror the Moon behind that with Lady of the Lords. And the back marker is Soft Sand, seven off them. As they head down now to the strip and they got 700 meters left to go, it's still Banbury dictating out there in front. A length clear of Dream Galaxy racing second. Behind that is Atar racing in third, then Smart Call and Celine. Siren's Call is further back with Ruby Ruby, then Mesmerizing Melody. They come for home now, they've got 420 to go. And the leader is Banbury still being held together. Down the inside Atar. Dream Galaxy, Smart Call being produced down the center, followed by Siren's Call as they come down with 200 to go. Banbury, Smart Call moves up a danger on the outside. And Siren's Call is also in the shakeup. Banbury, Smart Call on the outside. Here comes Siren Score. Smart Call and Siren Score. Siren Score's going to win it. Siren Score beats Smart Call. You want to be with this filly in her career. The Terry Stable, I mentioned it earlier, they've hit their straps running and they're peaking at the right time. And I tell you what, this filly impressed me at the Vile when she won her debut. Pierce Stratum. Thought she might not be suited to the track, but she's beaten them fair and square today. Sirens call for owner and breeder Peter DeBayer. Obviously she's woken up a lot because when I rode her last time she was a bit sluggish out the gate. We must have been two ceilings behind the second last horse. Uh, today she came out with them. I managed to get a little bit closer, uh, but still, um, I was hard at work a long way out before the straight. And now then he's still got to pick them up and hope, hopefully they, they realise uh, I'm just not encouraging him to keep up. I think this is a very good win. Obviously, from here, we're hoping you know she'll improve even more. Just about set, 1400 meters, Starling Stakes Field, and uh, it was time to test this exciting filly in graded company. And Terry decided the Grade Three Sterling Stakes was just the race. Little did either Terry or De Bayer know that she would 
be up against a filly currently considered to be the best of her generation, the recent Grade 1 Aventure Phillies Guineas winner, Majmu. Yet with Pierre Stratum in the irons, Siren's call was far from disgraced as she finished second, only beaten just over one and three quarter lengths by the mighty Majmu. In third along the rail is Smart Call with Flame Cat back in fourth, then Spellbound in one fine day. Siren's Call is six lengths off the leader. They followed by Sputnik Sweetheart, then Peep Show, Match moves down the centre. Pennington Sands is further back in the run with Drifting Dusk angling to the outside and Kylie. Into the home straight, 550 metres left to run. It's down the inside, Fire Dancing, Smart Call begins to improve, then Sarve. Behind that is Flame Cat, Match moves down the centre, starting to come home strongly. And Drifting Dusk follows it through, then Siren's Call. It's Smart Call the leader. Here comes Majmu down the centre with Flame Cat. Majmu's coming home strongly at Smart Call. Majmu gets to the front from Smart Call in one fine day. And Majmu, this is more like Majmu. She'll go on and win it. Siren's Call flew for second grade run. Oh, no. So number 14, all is secret, is victorious, well witcher. And for the lads, Wadad. Shay Shay takes the lead. Shay Shay wins the Elgos. It was decision time. Would they head to Cape Town and compete in the Grade 1 Phillies, Guineas or the Grade 1 Paddock Stakes or stay at home and aim their filly at the CTS Book 2 Graduates Race? Gates open and they sent on their way to a good even break. 
Spirits of Hamilton along the inside got out nasty. Lumia's right there. Genial is committing to a handy position as well. Blast on the wide outside is using up quite a lot to go and race handy. Eliza Doolittle in the red body is next. Spirits of Hamilton drop back to race at the rail around three lengths off the leader. Jupiter and Mars is in the white cap. Forest Fox in the yellow body is three wide, but racing around four, five lengths off the leader. Anna Festo won off the fence and London, they race midfield. Milton in the orange is next best. Then came Astro. Out after these ones, Trophy Wife. Sirens calls near her last. She's one off the rail and she's the pinball. She's getting bounced around at this stage. Then came the Stones. Captain Clipper races towards the rear. Then came Easy Lover. Inland for home around 600 meters to go. Lumia's two off the left-hand side and she's got some momentum behind her. Second place is Spirit of Hamilton. Forest Fox is moving up into third. Forest Fox is moving up quite nicely, in fact. Then came Trophy Wife. Sirens calls towards the inside rail. Spirit of Hamilton's in front. Second place is Forest Fox. Lamia's out in third. Trophy Wife and the Red Cap is in between them. That's got no luck and Siren's Call is quietly going about her business. But Trophy Wife and Siren's Call, it's a Terry 1-2. Siren's Call on the inside. Trophy Wife second. Siren's Call becomes a millionaire. This filly battles over 1,400 and um, she was always going to struggle to get there. Um, I was just hoping she would get there in time. But with all interference and, you know, you had to take hold at some stage because you can see in front of you, uh, it's, it's mayhem. And um, obviously, if someone falls, you've got to be aware you don't want to um, come down and get hurt. Uh, so I wanted to be a bit closer, um, but because the race was so rough, I found myself further back than I wanted to be. And she shouldn't be further back over 1400 because she doesn't really go 1400. She battles to, to go over this short distance. So just, it's very nice to have got up and well done to Sean. The filly looked uh, exceptionally well, uh, maybe he kept her fresh because of the 1400 knowing it's too short, so a job well done. Sean Terry, our trainer, finishing first and second. I know you'll be very happy with this one because uh, you did say that the 14 was going to be a touch on the sharp side, but I have to say a game performance by Trophy Wife and uh, when we chatted over the weekend you said her prep had gone incredible and she was very, very unlucky. Yes, Jules, uh, she had a perfect prep and she got really, uh, the, the, uh, she was the ham in the sandwich. She's a really small filly and I think she might have been unlucky. Uh, she might have given uh, the winner some cheek, but for that incident. Uh, well done to Peter De Bayer for sending this filly to me. I mean, it was a nice surprise. And uh, we had a bit of misfortune with the, the other filly that um, he sent me, but thank God this is made up for it. And uh, yeah, just for uh, the guys that support me, you know, Marcus and Chris were the horses that, that um, um, ran well. There was a, a, a horse of Marcus's that was unlucky not to make the cut, but all the horses earned a check. I'm very happy. Thanks to the jocks, they all did what they had to do. And uh, to the team at home, they, they really do an outstanding job and they have to live with me. I am the moodiest person that you could possibly work with. And uh, obviously to my wife as well and the kids who have to put up with my moods. Thanks a lot. Well, we, we know you're well on course as well, Sean, but nevertheless, you're a huge supporter of Cape Thoroughbred Sales. A great concept and great to have this type of prize money at Turfentine Racecourse. Yeah, what a pleasure. I mean, to race for this kind of money, I mean, don't you want to just go out charging and, and, and buying horses? But uh, the jocks, if they're going to ride this rough for the million dollar, we'll have to wear gum guards and headgear. Absolutely. Congratulations to you. Full marks to the team and a great race. Well done. A big thank you to CTS and to Pumalela and uh, obviously a job well done. Thank you. Mr. DeBayer, great to have you in Johannesburg at Turfentine Racecourse to see your colours here and of course to pick up the first state check. Well done. No, thanks very much, Julie. I've been watching the weather forecast every day for the last 10 days. Uh, but. A, f a fantastic ride by, uh, by Pierre. I don't think there's many jockeys who could have got her home. Um, she does want more ground and uh, he, he just managed to produce her when, it, when, it, uh, he, when he needed to. And to Sean, he's done a super job with this filly. Um, you know, because of the, the money on offer here, we decided not to take her down to Cape Town for any of the big races there. Um, you know, so we went for the money rather than the glory. Um, but uh, after this now, we can try and get, uh, you know, perhaps a group one out of her because she's a, she's a super filly. Adrian Todd. Chief Operating Officer for CTS. Great concept, great race. You, I, I think everything's just gone according to plan tonight. No, we're very happy, Julie. It's always been something we wanted to do, was to try to have these races to improve the market for everybody. I think that's been a successful thing that's been achieved here tonight. And not just having it in Cape Town, but this is our first big race that we've had in Johannesburg, and we're very happy. It went very well. Congratulations to Peter. He raised a very good horse there, 
we hope he's very happy. He seemed to be very happy and we're happy with the evening. It's all gone very well. And also great to have the support from the other provinces coming to Johannesburg. The likes of Cape Town, KwaZulu-Natal and Port Elizabeth all competing for the big prize. Yes, definitely. We've always wanted to be able to achieve that, to put something back into racing that the whole country can benefit from. And tonight's just the start. Drakenstein, Klaverfle Stud, Highland Stud Farm, and the leading breeders in South Africa join forces to acquire the Canadian champion classic sire philanthropist. American stallion analyst and statistical guru Bill Oppenheim said that philanthropist is a real standout sire and a huge gain for South Africa. As at June 2014, philanthropist is ranked 13th amongst the sires in the Northern Hemisphere in a list headed by Warfront and Galileo. He is only marginally behind Dynaforma, Monju, Dubawi, and stands ahead of champion sires Smart Strike, Giants Causeway, Tappet, Oasis Dream, Bernardini, and many of the world's other top sires. Philanthropist's first two crops in Canada produced six individual stakes winners from just 51 foals. This world-class 11.7 ratio of stakes winners to foals is well above the international 10% benchmark for champion sires. Philanthropist's first crop of just 26 foals included two champions, the million-dollar classic winner Pender Harbour, who won two legs of the Canadian Triple Crown, the Breeders' Stakes and Prince of Wales Stakes. Pender Harbour was listed among the 10 highest ratings in North America and the 2013 Sovereign Award for champion sprinter Phil's Dream. Having won the Grade 1 Nearctic Stakes in fine fashion last season, his 2013 sprint champion son, Phil's Dream, became Brisnet's third top-rated sprinter and fourth top-rated horse overall in North America after his 2014 Ontario Jockey Club Stakes victory. And Philanthropist's incredible strike rate with stakes winners didn't stop with his first two crops. He has upped his game even further now, with 97 runners, which include his current two-year-olds. He now has 58 winners out of 161 races, and 13.6% stakes horses who have earned him over 10 million US dollars. His current crop of two-year-olds this season include the stakes-winning filly FBI, who won the Nandi Stakes in a canter at Woodbine on Sunday the 3rd of August. And after a thorough investigation, trainer Bob Tillard's fingerprints are all over the Nandy winner, FBI. Philanthropist was a smart racehorse and a consistent performer. He won six races and put his name in highlights, beating Jockey Club Gold Cup winner Evening Attire. Philanthropist is a son of Chris S., one of Roberto's finest sire sons, and one of the best stallions to stand in North America in the past two decades. 
Chris S. sired five Breeders' Cup winners, as well as Epsom Derby winner Chris Kin. Chris S.'s fame also lives on as broodmare sire of the legendary Zenyatta, and he is also the sire of Arch. The Roberta male line is well known in South Africa through his incredible son Al Mufti and his superb sire sons Captain Al and Victory Moon. Of further interest to South African breeders is that one of philanthropist champion sons, Phil's dream, is out of a mare by Key Danzig's full brother, Emperor Jones. They are sons of Danzig, the sire of National Assembly. National Assembly and philanthropist share the same dam line, which presents us with incredible opportunities. Philanthropist dam, hidden reserve, was a high-class two-year-old and produced the grade one performer, Defer. She is a daughter of international multiple champion sire, Mr. Prospector, who has topped the international broodmare sires list nine times. Philanthropist's second dam, Pure Profit, is a well-known blue hen and daughter of major X-Factor broodmare sire, Key to the Mint, and she produced two grade one winners, the champion Inside Information and the champion American filly, Smuggler. This is the family that produced the great sires, What a Pleasure, Sovereign Dancer, and National Assembly. One of South Africa's top sires of the past 20 years, grandsire of the 2013 Equus International Horse of the Year, Shay Shay, and the sire of Soft Falling Rain, jointly rated third highest sprinters in the world in 2013. Philanthropist is one of a handful of stallions who have it all pedigree, racetrack performance, and most importantly, success at stud. He represents a rare opportunity for breeders in South Africa to use a big, strong, scopy stallion, free of the all-prevailing Northern Dancer blood. His first yearlings will be on sale in 2015. He stands at Drakenstein Stud Farm and is managed by John Freeman. We believe in excellence. We believe that if you're going to do something, you do it to your best ability. We aim to make Balmoral um, number one in the Southern Hemisphere, not just South Africa. Turf Carriers is a family-run business owned by Mark and Dory Sham and their three sons Michael, Matthew and Marcus. New Turf Carriers has been in long-distance transport since 1995 and pride themselves in excellent service, punctuality and loyalty to their clients. Every single stud farm and every single sale to every single race course, New Turf Carriers pride themselves in delivering your horse safely the welfare of your horse is paramount, and it is to this end that we have our own midway stop between Johannesburg and Cape Town. This is situated at Colesburg, where we have a stabling facility for 60 horses, so that the horses on long trips can get off and have a rest during their journey. The bottom line is, new turf carriers take your horse from door to door with pride, passion, and punctuality.
Gavel House is the leading website for trading horses online. Selling your racehorse, mare or even a share in a yearling is so easy on Gavel House. You can browse our sire's directory to match the best mating for your mare, with text description, videos and up-to-date sire's reports. Gavelhouse.com is the best way to sell your horse. We reach places others can't, where buyers and sellers deal direct and pay no commission. Go to gavelhouse.com. Right, this week on the Gavel House uh, section, we have certainly two exciting prospects if you want to get involved in a racehorse. The first will be, which is a very exciting unraced horse, Ula Var by Var out of Young Sensation. 2012 filly, she's currently on the market at 300 and 50,000 Rand. Ulavar is a well-conformed athletic filly with a great temperament and a pedigree to boast. In full training and has a superb action. Her damn young sensation was a six-time winner and graded place performer. She is a half-sister to well-accomplished cult Young Warrior. Ulavar qualifies for the two million Ready to Run Cup in 2015, the CTS Million Dollar Race in 2016 and the BSA added value stakes incentive. If you want to contact and find out more details, please get hold of Johan Janssen from Fieren. Well, the second of our opportunities to get into a racehorse, we're popping up one here. It's a yelling Victor Young by DuPont out of Anna Charlotte, a 2013 colt. Price on application, attractive, well-grown and well-conformed and sound colt. His dam is a half-sister to Young Victor, master of all, Royal Victor, Young Gallant and many other winners. She has had two foals to race, both winners. If you want to find out more about this one, contact Gernard Eckhart. Well, this brings this episode of Breeding to Win to a conclusion. I hope you've enjoyed it and you'll have your regular pilots back next week. Grant Knowles and hopefully got a hole in one in his golf tournament and hopefully Julie had one as well. Hope they had a great weekend and certainly from myself, Rod McCurdy, we wish you a successful racing week.